Hey guys, Brian Clock and Ryan Anderson, and uh, we're talking about Road Kings and FXRP in particular installations. Okay, um, many people say, why do you say FXRP versus FXRT? If you look at the back of this fairing, to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, go ahead, throw it down in the comments. But we call this an FXRP because of the area here. FXRT generally has a blockier speaker. So it's FXRD, FXRT has a speaker here. Our FXRP windshields will fit this model. The FXRT, FXRD windshields will also fit this model. This is the one we've decided to go after. So you can still put speakers in here. You can still put some sort of audio in here, whatever you want to do. This is how the fairings are going to come to you, okay? When you do this kind of a project, you have to have some sort of riser or pullback to the bar so that you can actually have the room to turn inside of there and it won't hit the windshield. Over here, this is Houdini. Houdini, I think, is aptly named from our friend Jerry Norskog in Montana. And if you're wondering why would he call a black bike Houdini, uh, this black bike could at any given point disappear. It's got a 120 inch merch motor in it. While it's a stock looking 94 Road King with a stock, you know, pinstripes, the stock black rivets on the seat, the whole deal, and it looks bone stock. When you get into it, it's definitely not. That little MP right there stands for Merch Performance. So it's 120 cubic inch motor. It's ridiculous. It's a lot. It's stock handlebars though. Okay. Yeah. So as you're looking at these handlebars, clearly here's one of the things we want to do with Road Kings. You're going to take these spotlights off. Okay. We're the only company that I know of out there that will allow you to keep this nacelle on your bike, okay? You can use this factory headlight right inside this fairing, no problem. It'll bolt, it's a seven inch headlight, bolts right in there. But what we're gonna do is we allow you to use your factory nacelle. So if you don't wanna replace these cool trim pieces, don't have a cool tree, and don't wanna have all that wiring showing, no problem. You get to it down the road, you can do it down the road. You decide you never wanna do it, you never have to do it, okay? We simply made it clearance, the whole thing. What you're not gonna be able to do, keep these stock handlebars no matter what. Back again over here to the Dyna, and you can see where, if I can line this up roughly, it would sit all the way back to here. And now you can look at the back side of it and see that those handlebars will clear. And you wanna turn the steering, Ryan? There, so you can see it's gonna clear the windshield, no problem, right? And that's just a set of eight inch pullback built well bars. Pretty simple stuff. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and take apart Houdini, see what happens and get this FXRP fairing set up for you. It'll come with a windshield, come with a bracket. The only thing it won't come with is the headlight. It'll come with the headlight cover, all the right stuff you need. You just have to decide on the headlight. In this case, we're gonna let Houdini retain a stock headlight. So we're just gonna put this headlight right back in there like every other set of instructions ever made, we're going to disconnect the battery. Yeah, just like that. Step number one, I'm gonna verify all of the components to our kit. We should have one fairing, one nine inch dark smoke windshield. Whatever this guy is, I'm just kidding, that's for the headlight cover. Headlight cover, spring bucket, mounting plate, um, crash bar mounts, neck bracket, hardware. We're good. Step number two. We're going to be using this fender cover right here to protect our nice stock fender. Don't want the paint to get scratched or have a screw or something fall down on it. <laughs> Okay, step number three, remove windshield if equipped. So if your Road King has a quick release windshield, you just grab the side of it, pull your tabs out of here, lift up to get them out the bottom, set it off to the side. Number four, remove headlight trim ring. I'm just gonna use this little guy right there. This little screw, right like that. That guy. There we go. Up. 
why we use a fender cover. Okay, number five, we're gonna move the headlight retainer ring. So that's this guy. Three Phillips screwdrivers. Doop, doop, doop. Three Phillips screwdrivers? Three Phillips <laughs> head screws. Using a number two Phillips screwdriver. So I use a fender cover. Now be careful, because once you have these loose, this headlight can and sometimes does just fall right out of there. There's your trim ring. Remove the plug from your headlight. Remove headlight mount. Just like that. Number seven. We're going to remove the nacelle trim. So what we gotta do is we gotta grab the wire for the spotlight. So we're gonna have to disconnect this guy. We're gonna disconnect this guy. Just like that. Like so. I'm just gonna nip it. I'm just gonna nip it. Yours may have zip ties, it may not have zip ties. Ours does, so feed this down through here. And just so we can get this guy off, we'll disconnect this only because this, in all reality, should be behind this wire and then connected. So this does not pertain to you guys unless it's happened to you. Okay. So now we we'll grab our half inch. And when you take this loose, I will actually, so that's not supposed to happen, but it's okay. The studs are supposed to stay in there, but it's okay. So I'm taking the bottom loose, I'm not taking it out. I took the top completely out. Biggest reason for that is because this bottom has slots right here. So we'll just whoop. See, that's how it's supposed to be. So our bottoms are loose. So then I can just whoop, off she goes. So save this hardware in case you ever want to take the fairing off and go back to a naked road glide or sorry road king my bad so the next step will be removing the nacelle okay with that there's two nuts in here i believe it's like 11 30 seconds or something you see that guy right there that's one but then what you can't see is back up in there number two the second one back there, you just have to loosen. You don't have to take it all the way out. See that? See how it's coming loose there? So we're on the way. Biggest reason why you don't take this one all the way out is because you can't really see in there. But I do what I feel, you know what I'm saying? It's close. Okay. So now this piece here is just going to pop off. It's like your beauty ring, kind of like a beauty cover. All right. I'm going to take these two Phillips head screws out with a number two Phillips. So the goal. Oh, okay, so we're not quite loose enough just yet. Got to keep going. This is a pain. You don't have patience. 
I got plenty of that, so we're good. This is a lot easier when someone else is doing it and you're the one watching. So, okay. That's one half. The other half, see how I lifted that up? So the reason you don't want to take this nut all the way off is because this sits in here like that and then tightens down. So if you take that off, you're going to have a one heck of a time trying to get it back on. So we're just going to connect these, disconnect these. I'm going to set this over here. This is what Brian was talking about when he referred to people having nice trees. So if you look at these trees, they're just, they're very basic. They're ugly looking, just not very inviting to look at. Plus the downside is you have all this hanging out. So with running our nacelle on there, it covers this all back up, gives you the factory look, makes it look nice. You don't have to spend $2,500 on some trees. This is a point where you would swap out your bars. For the purpose of our video today, we'll be rolling the handlebars back. You will be taking them off, removing them, and installing risers of some sort. Cool thing about the Road King fitment is we're offering two different styles. We're offering one setup where you run a mustache bar which will then run separate hardware, but we are also offering crash bar mounts. What? Everything will come in the kit, so it is up to you on how you personalize your Road King. And look at this, lower support. That's cool. They're all labeled. Neck bracket, neck to frame hardware. The way that this is going to go on, just so you guys can see, is these little bungs here, these are little plugs. We'll pop those out, the neck bracket will sit just like that, and we'll bolt it up. So hang out with me for just a second while I get some stuff to take that out of there. And then. plugs out and we have our neck bracket we're going to be using bag F this is our neck to frame hardware so we got fine thread here with lock nuts for this you're going to use a 9 16 we're ready to install the neck bracket with doing that I would go ahead right now and take your headlight plug I would slide it through the middle of this hole which can't be done because it's too narrow. So we're going to uh, see if we can, there we go. There. You got a picture of that? Yellow, black, white. So yellow on top, black below, yellow and white on its own. Okay. You see that right there? That's a little lock tab you gotta push up on, on both sides. Just like that. And then you'll be able to remove your terminal. There we go, just like that. So, on the white floor, that tab and that tab. Bend them up, slide it out. I would say if any of you have never had your nacelle or anything off or audio or any of that fun stuff put in, this would be an excellent time for you to take a few minutes to straighten up some of your wiring, maybe add a few zip ties, because exactly how you see it is how it's going to come to you. 
from the factory. So, now we can actually take this and we can spin it this way so it's not cocked up all shitty like. Stick that through there. Stick that in there. Put that in there. Twist that like that. See, it looks better already. Cleaning up wires. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. See? So I keep you around, Jacob. Keep me on my toes. You know what I'm saying, dog? Not because I work here, but. Well, because you want me here. A little because you work here. Oh, yeah. A little. Yep, for sure. All right. So now we have our cables cleaned up just a little bit. Got everything kind of situated where we could tie it up and make it make it look nice. So now I'm gonna put our two bolts in. Personally, I like to put the head of the bolt to the show side because I don't want to be seeing a nut and washer. We're going to be tightening these bolts down to 26 foot pounds. Not a lot. Beep. 26. That's it. Yellow on top. Pretty sure. Second, let's go look at our photos. Bam. See? Look how clean that looks. Looks so nice. And if someone asks, hey, whose fairing is that? Look at the badge, man. Look at the badge. That's what I'm going to tell them. You know what I'm saying? Cool little trick for you uh, DIYers out there if you didn't know this. Spin two nuts onto whatever stud you're trying to get out. Hold the one. Tighten the other. Take the inner one. Spin it out. Oh, man. Thought I was stronger than that. Denied. Anyway. Now you can get the bolt out easy. Or the stud or whatever. There it goes. And then... Same thing, put it on there, loosen it up, these come off, this comes out, goes the same for putting a stud in, like if we were installing these, same thing, you just do it reverse, so bag G, nacelle, we're going to install the nacelle, back on her. So we'll take this guy, we'll take this guy, we'll use two hands this time. I do appreciate you. Okay. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Doop. And then shoop, doop, doop, doop. Yep, just like that. So from what it looks like, we have not moved. So 13 foot pounds, click, click. You guys have the battery operated ones, you can use those too. Beep. Beep. Okay. So, got our handlebar cover on. I'm going to install our two 
Phillips screws with our number two Phillips screwdriver. Got a haircut today. I can see that through the hat. Oh, really? No. Oh. <laughs> How are you supposed to see your hair cut through it? I don't know. I thought maybe... Oh, the backside looks great. <laughs> Especially like it where it sticks out of the lip. <laughs> okay. Your little beauty cover goes back on. You can face it any way you like. I like to put it on the way it came off. You may now reinstall your... Nacelle crown. See that little hook, that little hook jobber right there. You see that right there? That's got to go up in here. Hook, hook it. It's like that. Then take our little nut, feed it up in there. Give that guy a little twist. Make sure. Make sure she's tight. Fairing to neck hardware. Then I'm also going to grab my fairing mounting plate and mounting bracket. One thing you should know about this is this is directional. This little cutout here faces the bottom. So this will go just like that. I know it doesn't make sense. It's not right. It's off. I know we designed that like that on purpose. Okay. Transform this road king. Set that just like that. And take your fairing adapter with your hardware. Put one of these on there. Get her through. Okay. Reach up behind here, put our nut and washer on. My suggestion to you would be put one of the bottom bolts on first because then you can let go of it. So I'm basically just going to where I can still move it from side to side. That's what I'm looking for. For those of you who do not wish to run a crash bar, stay tuned. Later in the video, we'll actually be taking this crash bar off and we'll be mounting up our mustache bar. So stay tuned for that. Next up, we got the fairing mounting plate and fairing on. I'm gonna be going into bag J here, along with my lower support mounting plates. We're also going to be using bag E, the lower support to fairing hardware. So we have our crash bar support plate. We have our lower fairing support. We're going to take our washer. Again, I'd rather see a bolt than a nut. Put that on. Gonna loosely mount this. Reason for that is we still have our swiveling capabilities. So then you would stick this up like this, and this flat plate is gonna sit on the inside right here between those two holes. It's gonna sit up there like that. And again, up from the bottom so that our nuts are hidden. Like so, just get a
Trying to do this blind over here. We would then take our caps, throw that on there. So now that we have our crash bar clamps mounted and tight and our lower fairing support plates tight, uh, we're now going to jump into the headlight ring and then we're going to be using bag C and this is our 7 inch headlight ring mount. The thing about this guy is when you go to set it up on there, you can't screw it up and the only reason I say that is because it can only go on one way. See that screw? That screw you want to point it down. That's what this recess is for. Don't just go ram, ramming them in with a electric tool. Start them by hand first. Make sure you're not cross threading them and then once you're good, tighten her up. Okay. Now your headlight ring will be pre-assembled, so your retainer ring will already be screwed to it. So you will have to remove that hardware, again, just like your factory ring, retainer ring. There's going to be three screws, Phillips head. And what we're not doing is we are not adjusting the springs because the springs actually control the angle of your headlight. We are just taking out the Phillips head screws. So when we go to install this headlight, we're going to be plugging it in back here. Just like that. Set that in to the top. I'll hold that like so. Uh, you will have to spin this, obviously, because they're not the same, so it will only line up one way. Get that started. Just like that. Okay, now, assuming you have your new handlebars on, assuming you have your controls on, your new turn signals, this point right here is where I would then function test everything. At the same time, I would turn on your headlight, adjust it to where it needs to be height-wise. Once you're finished with that, we would then grab our headlight cover and bag A. Bag A is our headlight cover hardware. Always cut towards your buddy. Don't cut yourself. This, just like your spring bucket, is made to go one way. See these little dimples in there? Right there and right there. That indicates the bottom. So this will actually face like this. Just like that. So, if you'd like, I would recommend also putting the seam here. Starting that at the bottom. So I like to put that right in the center there and then start on a corner. This is going to get take some patience until you get it started. This is probably going to take more time than putting on the whole fairing. And I'm just working this around, moving both ends of it, wiggling it onto the because this is a tight fit. This is not just something that's just gonna slide on there and then pop off. This is gonna stay. Now that you have your trim on, our next step would be installing our four well nuts. So those you're just gonna press down into there and please use the washers provided on your screws. That's going to take less stress and pressure off of these 
uh, covers because you're expanding the surface area, right? So before this goes on, this looks like a dirty lens. So we're going to clean it with the one and only. Get my grubby prints off there. Look at that, look at that shine. This headlight cover, it's 25 inch pounds. That's all you're gonna tighten it to. So for the windshield, we're gonna be using bag B. And what that is, is that's gonna be a quantity of seven well nuts, seven Phillips head screwdrivers, and seven washers. Screwdriver? Seven Phillips screws and then this is going to go up on there looking just like that and you got a fx r road king each fairing will come with a nine inch dark smoke Bloop. so i'm finding that the uh the push and twist method is actually working out to my advantage. So the push and twist is you squeeze it, you push it, and you twist it. Bam, just like that, buddy. Now, I'm going to install all my washers and all my screws. Just the edge, so we can keep it nice. My recommendation would be to put all seven screws in before tighten, tightening any one of them down. This way you can make sure that windshield's lining up nice. And just like we cut the wind, you're going to start in the middle and work your way out. Okay. Ta-da! That's what I finished. Road King FXRP fairing looks like. It's pretty slick, don't it? With the droopy bars. With the droop bar. Heck yeah, that's straight drag style, dude. Like, if this thing wasn't on a lift, I'd, you know, I'd try it. We will now be getting into installing our mustache bar, but for that to happen, we have to remove our crash bar. So with that, you're gonna have one on each side. It's gonna be a Torx 40 right there, and same on the other side. And then up in the middle here, you're going to have a quarter inch Allen right there. And then this will come off. We'll grab the hardware and the mustache bar and we'll throw that together. Don't forget about the nut on the inside. Yeah. All right. So you're going to have a Torx 40 and a 916 nut on the back side. That's going to be on both sides. Look at that. Take our quarter inch. Come up in here. So when you go to take this crash bar off, you'll actually rotate it forward and then drop it down because but it has a nut welded to the back of the crash bar. So when I get this out, I'll show you what I'm talking about. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to rotate forward and then drop it out. This is another reason why we use fender covers. So that tab there, what I was talking about, that slides up in here. And the reason we have to take that off is because our mustache bar will actually mount 
right there. We're going to be using bag H, which is the lower support without crash bar. This will have the nut, bolt, and washer that you're going to use for that middle that you took out of the crash bar. Easiest way I've found to do this crash bar is sliding it in one side, having it cocked sideways, lifting it up, and then swinging it in. Come like that, and then we're going to slide it like this up in there and then down on. And then you'll notice, see the angle on that, on that bar, that drop down? That's going to correspond with the angle of the frame. So if it lines up like that with no bolts, you got it on right. If it doesn't sit flat, you got to spin it 180. So the next step will be after you get your mustache bar on is we're going to loosely mock up the hardware. So when you have the crash bar off and you're deciding that you're going to be using the mustache bar, one thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to leave the fairing mount loose. And what that allows you to do is have the fairing loose so that when you put this mustache bar on, you're not fighting the holes because obviously the, must, the mustache bar is a fixed piece where our crash bar mounts, you can adjust and move as needed. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that the fairing is loose so that we can line these holes up. And then once everything is on, once you're happy with everything, that's when we will then go and finish torque the fairing, the mustache bar, and then we will then assemble the headlight bucket. So for your crash bar, you will have your nut along with your bolt. You get your fingers up in there. Because we're using a knurled nut with a washer on it, it's going to be act as a self-locking nut. Self-locking nut, so you'll just be able to tighten this guy up, and the nut won't move. We'll tighten down our mustache bar, tighten down the rest of our fairing, and we'll be good to go. So I'm back. What an afternoon, huh? A little Houdini. A little magic, a little crash bar install, no crash bar engine guard install. Um, you end up with all kinds of bags of different hardware that we hope you used in the right spots. And it looks like alphabet soup. But look at this, huh? Yeah. You got to be nice. stoked about this. And it, it, it's a really clean, simple application that's going to make all the difference in the touring ride on this. And if you're not familiar with the FXRP fairings and you've made it this far, good for you on having the curiosity. But truly, this design, which Charlie came out with in the 80s, is one of the best all-around aerodynamic fairings they ever made. And you'll be shocked at the protection you'll receive by putting this on your bike. So we're not the best. We're aiming to be the best, okay? So if we have a problem, you saw something on this video you didn't like, you had a question about something, please give us a call, 605-996-3700. Let Ryan, myself, or one of the other guys know. We're happy to get back to you. One thing we pride ourselves on is customer service. Get clocked. <laughs>